Hi everyone, it's Mary, Passion for Paper. Thanks so much for joining me today and I wanna wish you a very happy new year. So exciting to start a new year and I'm just thrilled to be here with you and starting off the new year with this video with lots of new ideas and creative things to try out and share and explore going forward this year. I'm really excited. Um, one of the really big uh, announcements that I am so excited to share with you now that it is 2024 is that I will be a design team creator for Old Dulcina Anne and I'm very excited. I'm going to post her information in the description box below and I really am looking forward to creating with her digitals and also some of her beautiful fancy yarns and it's just going to be so much fun and I really am looking forward to bringing um, that to you in the new year so <clears throat> stay tuned. Today we're going to be loading up some neutral pockets. I have done a video that describes exactly how to make these pockets and I have a prototype um, that I created and a full tutorial on that. I will link that um, video below as well. And today I have three more pockets to share with you. We actually created a pocket from scratch on the last video that I um, made for these so that you can see the entire process. And then um, I had also had three more loaded pockets to share in that video, but those have all since sold. So I'm completely sold out of loaded pockets on my Etsy shop. I said, oh, it's time to make more. Let me just join in, have you guys join in with me, turn the camera on and we'll load up these pockets together. So if you wanna see how I made these, just check out that um, other video that I'm linking below and you'll see. I unfold this paper after I fold it, sew on these things so that you can still, you know, it's not sewn all the way through the pocket. You can still put something in there and then I sew along the bottom. But here are three lovely pockets that I thought it would be fun to just load up. So I have an assortment of different coffee dyed things. I do love to coffee dye and I always have something sitting in a coffee tea dyed bath. I tend to mix coffee and tea together. Sometimes I do just tea, sometimes I do just coffee. And a lot of the times I mix them because I really enjoy getting a variety of colors. And you can see that they get some really awesome markings on them too. I love doing a grungy look. And so a lot of these have that. Here's a more grungy. So some are more grungy, some are less grungy. These are vintage Rolodex cards that I purchased at a thrift shop and just coffee dyed them. And a lot of different levels of grunge on these. Some are much grungier than others. This is a lighter one here. So I thought we'd put a couple of these in. And then this is something really fun that I just did recently. Um, I saw uh, an Instagram reel and I'm trying to think of her name. She did the, Francesca, she did the uh, scrap challenge, which was really fun. So I was watching a reel of hers and she said, oh, you know, if you don't have the, um, embossing plates, you can emboss just with an embossing folder. And she actually just uh, put it in the folder, sprayed it with water and rolled a um, glass jar over it. And I said, well, I have a big, heavy uh, rolling pin. Let me try that. So that's what I did. I just put some coffee dyed paper into um, an embossing folder. And this is a beautiful pattern. I forget what this is called, um, but I sprayed it with water. Um, closed it up, rolled it with my rolling pin, and just let it air dry. So I'm going to be, you know, using those for things. I have another one here. I did just this little Paris label, and then I inked around the edge. Um, so I love that. 
these uh, tags are some more tags that um, this one I have stamped with my Eiffel Tower stamp. And these are, again, just put into coffee tea dyed baths. And some are more grungy than others. This one I actually did some slow stitching here on the side and uh, put a little pattern paper on there. So these obviously need to be decorated more unless I decide to just sell them kind of as is and let the new owner decorate them. I have these cute little words. These I do sell in my shop just on a long sheet of paper. I have hand torn them and inked around the edges. These I sell in my Etsy shop and I will link that below. I believe I have uh, one or two of these left. These are vintage library periodical cards where you log in the periodical month by month and these are some beautiful um, index cards that I have coffee dyed using a stencil and then spraying it with more coffee dye to get that two-tone look and these are just regular index cards you can kind of see the lines on a few of them some of them they've been washed away so we can use some of those and then um let's go ahead and get started there's um i'm just gonna pick one and get get going with it i'm gonna do this dream one first so we'll move these off to the side so in a loaded packet i do like to put one of these time cards because they're so heavy and thick. They're a really nice, sturdy time card. These are vintage. I found these at a thrift shop. And so unfortunately I only have one pack. So when those are gone, I until I can find some new ones. I did find something else uh, recently that was kind of fun. These are video log cards. They're not nearly as thick as the time cards, but they are, you know, a lightweight card stock and I did coffee dye them. So I thought that would be fun, you know, cassette uh, videos when people would make little libraries for these. And obviously those aren't really being used much anymore. So that's kind of a fun vintage item we can put in the back. And then I just figured I would put one of these lovely scrappy notepads. Oh, these are Christmas. I didn't realize I still had two of these left. Awesome. Um, not going to put those in these loaded pockets because I, I do have two Christmas themed ones left. So I will put those in there. Um, so this one is looking pretty fun. This is a scrappy notepad and I have some uh, vintage lace coffee dyed cheesecloth and a bit of coffee dyed paper. We have some vintage French book page, lovely stamp. I love this paper. This has got the, um, it's the same pattern as this is. I, I do these as well. And I'm not sure if I have them in my shop right now. Every so often I get a batch to sell and then they are sold out. It takes me a while to make another batch, but this is the, um, one that I coffee dye with the um, tablecloth, the plastic tablecloth on it. And so I like, sometimes they rip and so I have to just have pieces. So I put the pieces in the scrappy notepads. Love this little stamp, Paris. I think that means city maybe. Um, not 100% sure this is an old vintage book page piece. And then some more coffee dyed paper. And this has the lovely Eiffel Tower stamp on it. And when you turn it over, you can see the messy stitching. And I do like to leave these hanging to make that shabby chic look. So we're gonna put this in the back, uh, right in front of those nice, sturdy, strong, vintage time card and video card. Now, I do have these also available, uh, I believe, in my shop. I just saw um, that I have a set of these. They don't have the rounded corners yet, or they are not embellished. I just have the card, but you could, um, you know, embellish them yourself, round the corners and so on. I like to have that little bit of shabby chic uh, look here. So we have sari silk and coffee dyed vintage lace. And let's see, I'm just looking at the rest of my cards here. I have 
some that are embellished and some plain ones. Okay, I think I will take, ooh, these are really fun too. I just wanted to get these out and start using them more. I love these vintage bingo cards from Milton Bradley. So excited when I found these. These are very sturdy. Um, so I think I'll put that in one that doesn't have the time card because I do like to have that one really sturdy item in there. I'm gonna stick a tag in here. This is just kind of like a unadorned tag. And then I'm, I'm kind of being mindful of what colors I wanna put in there. This is one of those vintage library periodical cards. And then maybe one of these would be nice. Let's see if I can get that in the front. And just kind of move everything around a little to get it to look its best. And I'm really liking that. So here we go. One loaded pocket with quite a bit of lovely ephemera in there. Dream. So I'll be setting that aside and taking the photos and listing that in my shop as soon as I can. Where did I put the next one? So here's our next pocket, Paris. Love this. And some more just extra threads for texture and vintage coffee dyed lace, little French book page, authentic book page, and some trim. So this actually has a lovely pattern on the back from one of my coffee dyed stenciled pieces. And again, sewing across the bottom. So for this one, let's do a bingo card. This is really nice, sturdy, strong. That's really gonna give it the structure in the back of the um, floating pocket. And then I think I wanna do, oh, I think actually before I get the smaller cards, I'm gonna look for a larger card. I think this would be a nice place to put one of these since it's kind of similar pattern. And we have some complimentary patterns there. So we kind of put that, oh, I like that number seven. It's a great number. And then this is a journaling card that I made with a little bit of sari silk and coffee dyed lace sewn across the top. That messy stitching and a little bit shabby chic look there. And I'm going to separate that out. Ooh, love that grunginess. So, yeah, see renewal date, expires, bind, has all of these great things on there regarding um, library, library materials. Um, so they don't use those anymore. So I got those for free actually. Library was giving them away. They were in the free pile, so that was fun. So let's see. Hmm. We need some more. Ooh, see now this would be a perfect spot for this um, tag because it's got some pattern paper here and this Paris is stamped on pattern paper. So I would love to be able to have that in here. And then these are really pretty. I have a special um, table that I put these on and spray them and they dry beautifully in the sun. These are also just index cards. I really like the colors on here. I think this one looks nice. One more in here. I think this is going to be more of a background piece not a featured piece so i'm gonna put that behind a couple of the other items don't want to lose the seven i love that okay <clears throat> so i hope everyone's enjoying the new year 
I went back to work today. It's only um, January 2nd, so um, that's always a challenging thing after being uh, away and having some vacation days, uh, days off. I really had a wonderful holiday, such a lovely time with the family and doing all of our fun Christmas traditions and activities. So really enjoyed that. I was just seeing if I could get one more of these lovely cards in here. Let's see. I feel like maybe we need an adorned one or an embellished one. Let's see if I can see how that looks. I also might use something a little smaller. These are cute. So these I made um, just an old, um, they're not playing cards, they're cards from a game. And I didn't want to play the game anymore. And I said, well, there's a whole stack of cards there. Let me use them in my journals. So I just kind of collaged a bunch of book pages on them. And they're nice and sturdy because they have that card in between all of the collage pieces. So I'm really liking this. I think if we put a little something in here, I have these delightful little um, things here. I tied them onto this beautiful piece of driftwood that I got from my niece summer when I went to visit in Minnesota and let's see what I might want to put on here kind of like this one and or this one I think this one looks a little better I'm just gonna pull that out and pop it through this because it just needs more it needs a little something more here so let me try poking this through, or I could do the bow. Let's see which one looks better. Just tie this around here. And that way we have a little bit more interest going on here. Not super happy with that. I'm going to try it one more way. And now my little thing is getting real shabbied up. That's okay. That's one of the things I love about shabby chic. Okay, I think I'm going to really enjoy seeing this tied. Now it's probably going to be too small for a bow, but let's give it a whirl. If we did something like that, maybe I could put it on this side. Ooh, that's cute. We don't even need it in a bow. Just gonna gently place that back in there and let that kind of hang down and tuck that one in. Ooh, that looks nice. Okay, happy with that. And then I think we just need one more thing. This is just a little, um, Image, uh, Toulouse, Marseille, Fabrique. This looks like a piece off of an invoice that I purchased from one of the ladies on Instagram. And then I scanned it into my computer and then I print them off and coffee and tea dye them. Oh, I love this. I'm real happy with how that came out. So this is our loaded pocket number two. That will also be going in my Etsy shop. And let's do our last one. So here we go. Flow. I like to get into flow. I think that's so fun. And I think that's something that is just so valuable. You get working and you just lose track of time and everything. And you just really get into flow. It's a wonderful stress relief to get to that state. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in one of these coffee dyed time cards. I'll try the side with a little more color maybe. Pop that in the back. I like it because it's thick and it gives it a nice um, backing. And then I think we need one of these. Ooh, that's really pretty. I love the design on here. I'm going to go with that one I'll put that in the, actually I'm going to put 
I'd like to put another scrappy notepad in one of these. I have a cute little one and I have this bigger one. So let's see. Try this one. Oh, Madame Bovary. I love that French book. And it's all the little French words there. Page 446. Okay, that looks nice. And see if we can fit something here in front of that. And then, oh my gosh, I forgot all about these. I love these little Rolodex cards. These are vintage, coffee dyed. I'm going to have to pop one of these in each of these because I think they're so fun. And just gives it a nice little extra bit of layering. A little bit of extra flair so there's one here and I don't want to cover up all that beautiful stuff but I could just let it peek out the top there we go and we'll pop one in here I think I have a lighter color one that would look nice right in the front and then these are beautiful swirl patterns Put one of these in here and love this pattern. Let's see if that's gonna work. What am I getting stuck on here? There we go. Must have been the stitching, but it is open, so you can get through there. Oh, I want one of those vintage library cards. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, wow. I see some of them are really grungy. Like this one is really dark here, so I think I would save that one. This is kind of cool because it's got smaller boxes with all the different months. That one's really pretty. I love that swirl. I feel like I could use something a little lighter in color tone. Even though it's pretty grungy, it's still that beautifully light color tone. So I think I'm going to pop that in here. And there we go. We need something else. How about... Hmm... I'm kind of thinking this might look nice in here because... It's a good contrast to all of those lighter colors. I just don't want to jam it. Gotta be real careful. Kind of like seeing that behind it. Peeking out there. Maybe we could put one of these through there. Let's see what we have. I got a whole bunch of beautiful laces from Jazella at Lavish Laces. I did a uh, video on several of those recently and put a link to her shop there but I'm um, thinking this might look nice in here this is not from the lace um, it's not from lavish laces this is um, some hand torn fabric that I had I, anytime I find you know fabric that tears well I get so excited and then I tear it and tear just a whole bunch of different size strips just see if I can do a bow I don't think I can but maybe sometimes I do a one bow thing too and that can work in this environment so that looks pretty nice I'm happy with that yeah I like the colors so we have a lot of the lighter beige and then we have a little bit of the darker here here and there a little something here poking out so yeah i'm happy with this just make it look just perfect well i don't know if i would say perfect but you know, perfectly imperfect, I think, is uh, one of the ways I like to describe the shabby chic look, the, you know, a little bit grungy, a little bit elegant, beautiful, uh, with that French flair. 
So there we have it, our third loaded pocket. So I just want to say thank you everyone for watching and I will be back soon with lots of new videos and beautiful things hopefully to share with you and I really appreciate you stopping by and um, I do also want to work some more in my tall skinny journal so that will be coming up soon and again happy new year.